Today I want to go through how to install Splunk. So today we're going to be installing Splunk on a CentOS server. First thing you're going to want to do is navigate to Splunk.com. Uh, go ahead and create an account on Splunk.com. Go ahead and click on the free Splunk button. And we're going to navigate down to Splunk Enterprise Download Free 60 Day Trial. And click that little thing right there. Now usually if you haven't logged in by now, I would ask you to log in. Uh, here you can pick out what OS's you want to download for. We are going to go ahead and download the Tarball version of the Linux install. And click download now. Now it's going to download in your browser here, but you can also get the command line for wget over here. And you can just copy this out and paste it right in here. You know what? Let's go ahead and move over to the temp directory here and we'll paste this. Oh, look at that. We don't have wget. So let's go ahead and yum install wget. All right. All right. Now we can go ahead and download Splunk. As you can see, it's in turbo mode now. And the little rocket goes all the way to the right. Boom. We are ready to go. So now we have our tarball in Splunk here. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and create a Splunk user. I'm going to go ahead and user add Splunk. I am not going to create a password for it right now uh, because I will just SU over to it. All right, so I've downloaded Splunk at this point. I have it downloaded in my slash temp directory. I am going to go ahead and extract it into opt. And then after this, what we're going to do is change the ownership of these files to the Splunk user and the Splunk group, uh, and then switch over to the Splunk user to work on installing Splunk. Now we're going to switch directories over to Ops Blanc. I'm going to just go right into the bin directory. Now this is where all of the executables live. We can take a look at them here, but what we're going to do now is we're actually just going to run Splunk. And there are some flags you can run that will help you speed up this process, uh, such as, you know, reading through the license and accepting, accepting that and then answering questions. Yes. What we're going to do is we're not going to do any flags. I'm going to run you through just the basic Splunk initial run here so we can see what it looks like. Now you press space bar to get through this. I'm just going to hold it down to get down to the bottom. Press Y for yes. We're going to enter an administrator username. I'm going to go ahead and make this admin. And then we are going to just create a password. Now I hope you all remember that password because you're probably going to need it later. So what it's doing now is it's doing the initial run off first Blanc and it is going to create all of the private keys and everything it needs to have for securing the credentials, among other things, as far as expanding out directories and checking to make sure things are there and getting things running. So if you're curious about the status of Splunk at this point, what I like to do is I like to build out this whole file path and that's just a personal preference of mine. Some people do alias this to make it a little bit easier for them to remember how to type the command. As you can see, Splunk is running. Now, if we go to this address, oh, Oh, look at that. It is not letting me in there. That's because eh, usually I forget to do this. Uh, it's got a firewall running. 
Now at a default, you know, default level, this is usually what's going on. So I am going to have to add these firewall ports into our firewall. So bear with me for just a moment here. I'm not doing anything crazy like adding additional zones. So we're going to need 8,000 TCP so that we can talk to the web UI. I added an extra D in there. All right. So now we've added port 8,000. Let's go ahead and add port 9997. This will allow us to ingest data off of a default, eh, quote unquote default port for the indexer side. I also like to open up 8089 for uh, management functions. Now let's restart the firewall. And as you can see, now we have a working Splunk install. Now there are multiple things you can do at the beginning to either make it faster or other customizations you can do on the install. Um, if you're installing a cluster, this is kind of how you're going to do each install at the very beginning. Every Splunk Enterprise install can become a Splunk server role. It just depends on how you configure it. So everyone is going to look like this. You're going to log into a server. You're going to install Splunk. You're going to run Splunk for the first time. Uh, there are some advanced things you can do, such as setting the admin password programmatically, accepting the license agreement, uh, answering yes on other questions. Um, you can also preemptively set the Splunk secret, which is what is used for hashing all of the passwords. It's a really advanced feature for like clustering. So if you want to be able to pass already hashed passwords and configuration files uh, to other Splunk servers uh, without possibly risking other people finding out these, these passwords. A, a way to do that is to set the, Splunk, the same Splunk secret on every server. And the only way to really do that uh, cleanly is to do it before you install it. There are ways of doing it afterwards. It's just easier to do it from the beginning. So now you can see we have a Splunk install. Now let's go ahead and log in here and let's see if I remember the password. I remember the password. You know what? I'm not going to save this. Let's live dangerously here. So your first time logging in, you're going to get these, this window here. Um, click got it. Uh, as you can see, you're, you're going to get another window here. I'm going to have it remind me in two weeks because this is not going to exist in two weeks. Now, what I like to do after my first initial install, is I like to go into settings, go to monitoring console. Now you can do this uh, on each individual server if you're running more than one, or you can create a distributed monitoring console out of a server uh, and then actually add each server in the deployment as a search peer, and you'll be able to do a health check on each one of those. So the first thing I like to do once I have everything installed is I like to go to health check and make sure that I'm starting with a nice clean slate. We're gonna go ahead and click start, and we're gonna let it go through. Uh, on the right-hand side here, you're going to see different colored checkboxes. As you can see, this one's not applicable. Um, a lot of these things, oh, there we go. Uh, one or more hosts has returned to CPU or memory specifications below reference hardware recommendations. That might be because this is a very low-powered server uh, that I don't plan on doing a whole lot with. So if this was a production server, I would obviously um, reference Splunk's minimum recommendations uh, or talk to somebody uh, like Splunk or somebody at Kenny Group and get uh, a recommendation on what I should do uh, as far as sizing my Splunk servers. That way, I mean, one, I won't run into this error, but two, it'll be ready for the load that I have. So a minimum recommendation will just get you in the door. Uh, if you're doing a lot of search heavy stuff, you may want more CPU. Uh, if you're, you know, if it's an indexer, you may want more uh, disk storage. Or if you don't want to deal with any of it, you might just want to go to Splunk Cloud. Um, this is all, you know, it really depends on what you want. Uh, but this, the same basic principles apply whenever you're just starting out from scratch here. So let's go through these things. Uh, see, I have not set any of the kernel tuning parameters for Splunk. Um, there are a few things you need to do to help Splunk run its best on a Linux server. 
And as you can see, uh, another one of those, another one of those settings is the U limit. Um, it's another one of those things where I, I'm not going to, this server's not going to live very long. So I don't mind dealing with these errors right now. And I'm not going to be putting too much on this. So it's not going to succumb a whole lot to these performance issues. Uh, if this was a production system and you did not have transparent huge pages going and you did not have the U limit set correctly, uh, there is a possibility that your searches will run like garbage and your server will run like garbage. And that's just, you know, that's going to make you not want to log in. So let's just go ahead and, and either, you know, set this up correctly now uh, or have your OS team set it up correctly. And just get everything all hammered out from the get go. So the good thing about this health check is you don't have anything on the system yet. Uh, if you are in an organization where you have to request resources or request request a configuration changes from an OS team, this is the point now where you'll be like, okay, I clearly see that these aren't set correctly. I need to go back to my operating system team and ask them to set these correctly before I move forward. Um, it doesn't stop you in the water, but before you start putting production traffic on here, you want to make sure uh, all of this is green and ready to go. Now, I'm gonna run you through this monitoring console real fast, just so you have an idea of what, what you're gonna be looking at. So if you go to the overview page, it's gonna give you a quick overview. If you are coming up on your license for the day, uh, the disk usage on the server, Currently, we're not running any searches. Uh, if we were, we would have these. This also counts concurrent searches, uh, which, you know, when you start scheduling searches or if you run some premium apps, you're going to get a lot of concurrent uh, scheduled searches. Uh, if you are running into issues with concurrent searches, um, I recommend installing Atlas uh, and using um, Scheduler Assistant to go out and kind of tweak those scheduled searches so you're not running on top of each other. As you scroll down here, you can see the CPU utilization, uh, memory utilization, and kind of a, a KV store metric here. Uh, at the very bottom here, triggered alerts. Now there are some alerts uh, that could possibly trigger from out of the box here, uh, but we can go through here and we can set up an alert. All right. So. It looks like since this is an all-in-one, uh, we're just going to leave it as is. And the whole alert thing is pretty much negated because it's an all in one and I don't have a cluster. Next, we're going to click on the summary page. The summary page is actually uh, relatively new. Uh, it started, I can't remember. It started in uh, early eight, uh, early version eight, um, or very, very late version uh, 7.3. Um, but this is a really cool little uh, summary that we can uh, quickly see some things here. Um, search latency, uh, skip searches, uh, and just any kind of alerts that, that might indicate that the server or the Splunk instance or deployment is not uh, fully healthy. As you can see here, there's not a whole lot of disk space. Uh, it's going to breach this, and uh, that's going to cause some indexing issues in the future. Uh, this I.O. wait, uh, you're going to see that, uh, it, you know, especially on this system because it's a, it has very low resources. Um, We've already run the health check. Uh, these other ones, I will kind of let you go through on your own and learn. Uh, there is one last thing I want to show you, uh, and that is in the settings and general setup. If you have a distributed environment, uh, the way you're going to set up your distributed monitoring console is you click this little button here, uh, hit continue. And any server, so if this was a cluster master, it would pop up all of the indexers right here. Uh, and you'll be able to add those to the instances. Um, so you set up this distributed monitoring console, uh, you hit apply changes, and you hit save. We'll go ahead and refresh this page. If, uh, if I had more than one instance here in my distributed monitoring console, um, I could go to settings, uh, hop on over to distributed search, go to search peers, click new search peer and I could add the URI, which is comprised of the HTTPS colon slash slash uh, the FQDN or the IP address of the host uh, colon 8089. This is why I added 8089 to the firewall port because there's going to be traffic 
between the Splunk servers for this. Um, and this would be the admin password, admin username, and the admin password of the target box. So if you have different admin usernames and passwords for your environment, um, whatever device you're trying to add in as a search peer, uh, you're going to have to add that username and password here. And then you would click save and go back to the monitoring console. Click on general setup. And it would show up down here where you can then edit the server roles and save it and then apply the changes. Uh, one, uh, one other thing that you may want to look at whenever you have a, a fresh install is this little box right here. It's either green or yellow like that or red. And it's going to show you what it is currently having issues with. Um, now be aware that the scheduled search that ran that noticed this may not run instantly all the time. So if you went in and fixed this issue, you may have to give it, you know, five, 10, 15 minutes for this particular alert to clear out of here. But you would know that it's not an issue anymore and that you can, you can ignore it until it starts to green up. See, look, the IO weight's already gone green. Um, I'm sure that's because we're not doing a whole lot on this server. There obviously was a lot of IO on the server when we were first installing it. Uh, and it was just probably recovering from that. And that has been how to install Splunk on a CentOS box. Uh, it's pretty painless, uh, pretty easy. It's a great uh, way to get in here and start learning things. So just keep keep an eye out for any videos we have up, uh, you know, about getting data in, what to do next here. Let's learn this together. Thank you.